episode of Bridging the Gap with Matt Chats. I'm here with Kimberly Haley today, who's got great experience both in the pricing strategy as well as in the enablement world. She comes from us live from New York. So welcome, Kimberly. And how are you doing today? Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be a part of this. I think that this is just inspirational and informative, and I'm just, I'm just really excited to be here. That's awesome. I am so stoked to be doing this series, especially having you be our first guest. So I love this. Uh, Kimberly, you know, like I said first, you know, we're bridging the gap between our outside stakeholders and then let alone the enablement team. So I know you've got experience in them, in them both. Mm -hmm. So before we get started in all that, would you please do, do us just the courtesy of an intro and just kind of some background for you? Sure, sure. So I think like a lot of people in enablement, my career has not been very linear. Um, it, it kind of went like this. So I started in a uh, typical sales role where I was doing account executive work selling in San Francisco, actually in Silicon Valley. And then I pursued a dream of mine to move abroad to London where I managed a customer success team. So then focus more on the retention side. And then I actually uh, started to really work on supporting the sales organization, whatever they needed, I got for them. So it started with, hey, I need some training content because I was in customer success, that made sense. Or um, we need to revise the contract. Whatever they needed, it was very random. And it kind of evolved into a sales enablement position. Uh, we need to fix the pricing, the, the price model. Okay, yeah. so that's what I did. Uh, we need to launch the CRM. Okay, great. And that's, I think, what um, you know, a lot of people notice from an enablement perspective is that you just kind of are a catch-all. You end up supporting whatever the sales team needs. And that's what I did when I was in London. And that's how I evolved into a sales enablement role. Most recently in, during the pandemic, I am excited to say that finally I uh, finished a year-long project of opening up my own freelance pricing consulting company, uh, a side gig that uh, took me forever, but hey, you know, pandemic, so what are you gonna do? <laughs> that is so awesome, Kimberly. Congrats, first of all. Thank you. I had no idea, so that is amazing. Uh, so, like I said, we're jumping into this Bridging the Gap series and how do we work Outside stakeholders, eight outside stakeholders with enablement partners. What, what, how do you currently work with, you know, the outside stakeholders with the enablement team and vice versa on both sides since? Yeah. Yes. And, and pricing works with enablement hand in hand all the time. Um, and I think uh, we almost are, are, we are with them in terms of, we feel sometimes like we're forgotten too, because if product develops something, um, they, think of, they think of pricing after. And I think enablement might feel that way sometimes too. Um, but, but with pricing, there are so many things that you have to communicate to the sales team. And so you have to work with enablement to communicate new pricing models. You have to teach them them how to teach the customer about it. You have to talk about new discounts. You have to talk about new revenue recognition rules and how that affects packaging and contracts. And it's not just a one and done thing. The thing with pricing is that it's a constant communication with the sales team and you have to update content and you have to think about negotiation skills. So it's a skill set. It's a content thing. It's a uh, communication thing. So you really have to partner with them. And then in the deal desk side, you really have to work with them to help communicate um, discount policies and RFP documents and make sure that the sales team knows that there are updated things that they have to use to work with customers about. So it's a, it's a real uh, constant engagement. That is, that is amazing. Uh, I know I've definitely touched base on almost every one of those aspects yep. along the line. So yeah, you're definitely true. I love all of that. Um, so besides starting your own freelance company, uh, describe your gold medal moment story or the shot from the mountain rooftop story that has been a defining moment of the outcomes that blew your mind from working on both sides of the team. Mm. Yeah, and I would say I, I would not, this, this moment was, was about a year and a half ago when I was working at a company where um, 
where I launched a, a new price model and I would never have been successful if it hadn't been for enablement. Um, and it was because I, I joined a data company and we were launching a brand new price model that was for the entire business. It was a complete overhaul of the way that this company had been doing business for more than 10 years. And even though the salespeople wanted this new price model, they had been asking for it. Customers in, in the NPS score, uh, the NPS surveys had been asking for it. Mm -hmm. um, to be able to, to train and articulate how to deliver this new pricing was very complicated because it was, it was so different from the way they had been delivering the solution before. Um, and so I needed help in communicating it because it was just our team and we were, we were a very small team. So when, when I spoke to enablement, it was like they were the, the, the clairvoyance and they just <laughs> said, don't worry, we, we know what they need and we got this and we got you. And they immediately just kind of clicked arms and said, we're going to work with you on launching this. And this was something that wasn't just, just a, a one training or one webinar. It took months, but they designed, they program managed a whole training program they managed the content, they managed the timing of the release. They even suggested to me things that I needed to create that I didn't even think about. They knew when things needed to go. They had the timing down to a T. They, they communicated things, articula they were able to articulate things so that if I couldn't be there, they could be the people that we could rely on to talk about things and communicate it because they had just learned over the, the course of time. So you could even rely on them as content managers. It was amazing and I would have never been able to do it without them. That is, that is remarkable. Yeah. It's almost like they played like that PM function for you to help yes. identify and again, using the term, bridging the gap between two external departments that need to be working together. I, that is, that is just so amazing. You know, our team works with so many different stakeholders in the focus areas. So we're constantly working with different people. So I can only imagine that you can also relate to this as well, but juggling way too much stuff at one time. Can you describe a time where <laughs> you've struggled or dropped the ball when working with enablement team? And like, how did you guys remedy that solution to create more solidified uh, working relationship? Yeah, yes. And I, and this was at the same company. And I would say, um, I definitely noticed it from sitting on both sides that um, enablement, and I, I actually said, talked a little bit about this before, that I do think that sometimes enablement gets put into a little corner and they are treated um, like people who organize training. And we were, we were guilty of that, where we went to them um, at, the, at the 11th hour and said, hurry up, we need to organize a training for salespeople. And, and it became a challenge because they needed time to prepare the right materials and, and again, program manage. And there were several other things that they needed to communicate to the salespeople at the same time. So one way that we solved for it was we came up with a little mini launch process, nothing too grand, nothing too complex, because there are already lots of um, racy programs out there and lots of big giant product launch processes out there. It was too complicated for us, but we just came up with this little, little program of um, <clears throat> every time there is a launch, uh, we're going to have a, a three months before the launch, we're going to have a little virtual meeting and there are going to be five people who will always have a seat at the table at that meeting. And we decided that sales enablement was a critical factor and they had an open invite. And if they couldn't make it or they didn't think it was a priority, that was definitely up to them. But at least the invite was extended and they knew that they were always welcome for every one of those launches here on in. That's just, that's just remarkable. Yeah. I think you touched on it very, very clearly there that having a seat for enablement and those launches for any kind of new products pricing or whatever kind of launches that you guys are releasing to the to the sales team is is huge and you know you touched on it again and last week I had Carly Laner talk about this too but sales enablement is not all just training mm -mm. and I appreciate you like reiterating that fact again this this week too is that we're able to actually look into this and say yeah they can do so much more besides just Here's the training at the 11th hour sales, go do it. You know, we're good. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. I love that so much. I think that that's a huge, huge aspect. And yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. 
So on that front, you, you talked about having a seat at the table and making mm -hmm. sure that launches are there. Let's segue into this. Like, how do you plan? <laughs> how do you plan your releases with your enablement partner? And how does it affect your guys' strategy and processes with a company uh, that you're working with or through yeah. the org? Yeah, I would say so that that helped a lot in terms of um, having the virtual meetings. But then but then I think another complexity is um, everybody's coming at you. So mm -hmm. another thing that we incorporated was we tiered our launches and said, OK, what's the most important? And then I would say, you know, the the top tier is we're replatforming something. And, and so that is we are an all in. Everybody needs to be in or, you know, the pricing model that I was talking about, we call that a commercial launch. So we separated pricing, pricing launch, excuse me, commercial launch and product launch. And we said that's a tier one down to a tier three, which was maybe a feature launch. And then the enablement team could de define what their um, participation was. And so in a tier three launch, you don't need to be the same thing that you are in a tier one launch. Maybe you're just um, updating some content and putting it in your sales enablement system. Um, and then maybe uh, adding it to your weekly communications as an example. So that's very light, but, but you're, you're still there. You're still supporting. You're just not doing it at the same level as a tier one. Yeah. I definitely think that's, that's huge that not every update has the same weight <laughs> going out of the door. Yeah. I was saying to somebody actually just, just earlier in the week, I said, I don't think enablement needs to be everything to everybody all the time. We just need to be what everyone needs us to be at that time. Yeah, no, that's great. I love, yeah. I love that phrase. That, that's, I'm going to write that down and keep that for me. <laughs> you got it. You can have it. <laughs> uh, so I love this question. It's very like, there's no right or wrong answer by any means, but if you had a magic wand, could do anything with limitless power. <laughs> how, how would you create that solution to form more of a collaborative relationship with your enablement team? I can't wait to hear what others say about this one. Um, but here's what I've been thinking about. And this isn't a control thing at all. But I would say, um, especially with the tools that enablement has available to them today, if I had my way, Mm -hmm. Everything that we want to feed to sales teams should be fed through enablement. And um, I think it's just more that enablement folks know what the team's priorities are from the chief sales officer. They know what the mind share capacity is. They know the skill set and the need for development um, from all the different roles across the go-to-market organization. So they know what everybody needs all the time. Therefore, if everyone just channeled everything, communication, content, training needs, all through the enablement team and didn't do anything on the side, then the right information in the right format at the right time would get to the right teams and we'd be a lot more successful. Yeah, I, that, that's awesome. So Kimberly, I hate to do this to you, but I'm going to throw you for a loop because I did not put this question pre -text. Okay. But... I think one of the things that you've touched on a couple times now that's very interesting, and I know our team has redeveloped how we are doing this, but how how would you like to see like RevOps get that information or Rev Enablement get that information? Or how would you like to feed that information to enablement so that way they're able to execute on this? What would be a method of delivery that you would you would see for your guys' team? To get it to to the enablement team? Yeah, I think yep. um that is, in order to centralize it, that's what I, I think utilizing a lot of the tools that we have available to us as enablement people, so some kind of sales enablement platform, I think is one. Um, something I've done in the past is, is set up um, a, a communications plan and, and, and just bring everyone together and say to, you know, the product managers, the marketing, the product marketing folks, um, the, the business unit heads, the sales leaders, anybody who wanted something uh, from the sales team and bringing them together and saying, let's set a schedule, let's set priorities. And so that, that we could all together build, you know, whatever they needed from a priority perspective. That, yeah, I love yeah. that. That's great. Thank you. And sorry to throw yeah. you No, 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 it's fine. I, ho I hope that answered it. <laughs> yeah, no, you did great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so any lessons that you may have learned from all of this to basically simplify stakeholder involvement along the way? Yeah, I think um, one, thing that, one thing that I learned, especially when I was in my enablement role, is that 
again, kind of going back to that concept of um, we can tend to just be thought of as training people. I think if we flip it around and we decide to take control of the conversation with the, the product folks and the marketing folks and we say, hey, I'm going to be that central piece, um, that might actually start to change the dynamic. So I would say um, the lesson that I learned is to just flip, flip the conversation and enablement be that linchpin. I, that, that's great. That's mm -hmm. awesome. You know, I cannot thank you enough, Kimberly, for joining me today. You, you've thrown out so many great, amazing points that along the way, like, it really does define how other people will work with enablement, especially deal desk and pricing. Like, yeah. I know some people organize that a little bit differently in their companies and don't have a deal desk partner, you know, directly working with them, but it's good to take that concept and that initiative and how to drive that within the uh, enablement world. So before I let you go, is there anything that I failed to ask you or any other nuggets of information that you wanted to drop before, you know, I let you go today? Well, I think, first of all, thank you again for having me. This was so amazing that, that you're doing this and so inspiring. Um, I know because you asked all these amazing questions, but, but I will say um, I'll share because, you know, in enablement, we're always learning and learning is living to me. That's kind of one of my little mottos. So I will share one thing that I've been trying to focus on during the pandemic, um, aside from getting my website up, because this was almost like a challenge. It was like a self self challenge for me. I thought, okay, what am I going to work on to be better on during, during this, this lockdown? Yeah. And the answer was networking because it's hard and I'm not very good at it. Uh, so I decided to test a few things and I've become a lot more active on LinkedIn. Uh, this is how we found each other, which I think is amazing. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Really, it's so cool. And some things haven't worked for me, um, you know, especially on LinkedIn, like I've learned what does work and what doesn't work and, and other facets, other types of networking. Um, and what I'm trying to do is to, to pull together a networking guide for, for salespeople so that we can teach them um, how to be better networkers because, you know, in terms of cold calling and in mailing, I, I get those a lot being in sales enablement. I'm sure you do too. Right. Get a lot of in-mails and they don't work as well if they're cold. So mm -hmm. I think um, if we can teach, teach our sales teams how to network more effectively, then we'll teach them to be, to be more successful. So that's what I've been practicing. That's awesome. I love that. Uh, networking is huge. Uh, that's why COVID is like driven me nuts. Yeah. Uh, personally, uh, I'm a very big social person. So being in my four walls of my house is just a little bit different. So I love having the opportunity to interview various amounts of people. Kimberly, especially I'm glad that I got to connect with you and really discuss how bridging this gap between deal desk and enablement really does make a very symbiotic relationship between the two of them. So thank you again, Kimberly. Everybody else, thank you for watching this Matt Chats video. Uh, next week, I've got HR coming on. So how does HR and enablement work? Very confusing, but very intriguing at the same time. So stay tuned to next week. And if you guys have any questions for Kimberly and Gildas questions, drop them in the threads below. Thanks everyone. Have a great rest of your day.